Hey guys, quick tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to implement motorcycles using the vehicle body node. So let me show you what I got so far. As you can see, we have our vehicle right here. As we turn the handlebars, it also turns the front wheel. We're able to move around as normal. The only difference is if we generate enough speed, we're also able to lean in the direction of our steering. So that way we're able to make sharper turns at higher speeds, all the while our vehicle maintaining an upright position. And that's pretty much it. So let me show you how I did that. So as usual, the very first thing we're going to do is work on our setup. So find your Blender folder, look for the Harley Davidson WLA, double click, click on new inherited. And afterwards, we're going to change the spatial node into a vehicle body node. And then rename it to just Harley. The second thing we're going to do, we're going to get our body, click on the mesh create single convex collision sibling and drag the mesh into the collision shape. So this part here is a bit different from our previous setups. What we're going to do actually is we're going to drag our meshes out of the wheel nodes. And the reason for this is because if we look at our model itself, you'll see that our wheels need to be at a fixed position at all times because the tendency, if it's in the wheel node, our suspension, our travel, as well as our rest length will affect whether or not it goes up or down. And for the sake of uh, the visuals, we want them to be in the same place. The only thing we want to do is we want the mesh to inherit certain values, such as the rotation, as well as the angle on the y-axis. So we'll be doing that with code later on. So for the time being, we're just going to rename this to back mesh, and we're going to rename this as front mesh. After that, what we're going to do, we're going to drag our front mesh and make it a child of handlebars. And the reason for this is so when we turn our handlebars, it turns the wheel accordingly. After that, what we're going to do, we're just going to move everything into place. So highlight everything here, move it up by one, and move it forward by 0.4. Then we're going to work on our camera. So to do that, you guys have seen this so many times before camera, and then a spring arm, set the spring length to 5, make sure the collision mask is layered 2, and then attach a clip camera. Make sure that everything is in place, so let's move it up by 2, just like that, and after that we'll just attach our normal camera script. Everything in here is what we've done in our previous tutorials, so I won't go over it. So let's just start working on our uh, vehicle's properties. So what we're going to do here, we're going to change our weight to 400. We're going to go to our back wheel. We're going to set the body motion as traction. We'll set the radius as 0.47. Change our travel to 0.1. Change our stiffness to 100. We'll also be doing the same thing for our front wheel as well, except our vehicle body motion will be our steering. Our radius is 0.47. Our suspension travel is 0.1. And our stiffness is 100. After that, what we're going to do, we're just going to save the scene. I'm just going to overwrite my previous harley.tscn and then let's attach our script. So as usual everything here is from our previous vehicles. The only difference is, is I changed the steer angle from 30 to 20 and also the steer speed from 3 to 2. I also added a new variable called steer lean which I set to as false. So everything here from the function integrate is unique to the vehicle. So let me comment that out for the time being. And let's just run the script right now to show you what it looks like without this code down here. As you can see, we have our vehicle here. And we can move around, but the problem is we fall over and that's pretty much it. So what we want to do, we want to be able to have the vehicle maintain an upright position and we also want the wheels to animate uh, the movement.
So to do this, we'll be retyping everything down here, and I'll just explain it as we go along. So the first thing we're going to do is type in function integrate forces, and then we're going to be checking if our uh, vehicle is currently active, which we established as if our camera is currently active, dot current is equal to true. And we're going to be checking if our vehicle is currently on the ground. So hashtag ground check if our front wheel dot is in contact or our back wheel is in contact, then our grounded variable is going to equal to true. Else our grounded variable is going to equal to false. The second thing we're going to do we're going to be checking if we're currently steering normally or if we're lean steering. So steer lean. And how we're going to do this is very similar to our previous, previous tutorial, which was our airplane tutorial. We'll be checking for a minimum speed. And if we're above that speed, we'll enter a steer lean. And if we're below a certain value, we'll go back to our regular steering. Let's go back to our script. It's going to be if negative transform basis dot x form underscore inv linear velocity along our z-axis if it's greater or equal to 15 we'll be entering our steer lean state so steer lean is equal to true else if transform dot basis e dot basis dot x form underscore inv linear velocity dot z is less than 13 our steer lean is equal to false so the reason we're doing it this way instead of using instead of just using an else statement is because if we're currently for example uh, at 15 we don't want it to flicker between the true and false because it's going to start making the uh, model jitter a little bit so what we're going to do is we have a minimum value to enter and then we're making it a few units below this value so that way uh, it doesn't flicker between the two. <laughs> well, that's kind of a, yeah. So after that, what we're going to do is going to focus on our inputs. So our vertical input is equal to negative input dot get action strength w plus input dot get action strength s then we get our horizontal input input dot get action strength a plus input dot get action strength d so just make sure that you have these keys um, binded so go to your project project settings and go to your input map and just make sure that these keys have already been set so that way they well they work so now that that's done let's just remove everything here and this is uh, we go into our movement script so I'll just explain it as we go along so hashtag movement if our grounded variable is equal to true and if we're currently in our sterling state is equal to true our angular velocity is equal to lerp angular velocity negative transform dot basis dot z times by a horizontal input at a speed of 0 0.1 so if i explain this real quick um, it's kind of similar to our previous tutorial and our previous previous tutorial with our helicopter and our um, airplane. Basically what's happening is that we're getting a certain input, for example here, and we're rotating it. So we're rotating ourselves along our z-axis by our horizontal input. So if I just show you visually how it looks like, we're here, this is our z-axis, and we're getting a horizontal input to lean ourselves in a particular direction. All right, so that's explained. And our steering is going to equal to lerp. We'll lerp our steering value to our rotation dot z divided by four at a speed of 0 
And the reason for this is if you're going uh, fast, you don't want to be turning at, um, at a weird angle. So basically, this just makes it more realistic by um, kind of restricting the turn of the front wheel. After that, it is else if our rotation degrees dot z is greater or equal to 1, angular velocity is equal to lerp, angular velocity, negative transform basis, e basis dot z times sine rotation degrees dot z at a speed of 0 0.1. So if I explain this, it's kind of the inverse of this. Uh, we're basically getting our rotation. So if we go here and we go to our transform tab, you'll see that if I'm here, it's at a negative value. And if I'm here, it's at a positive value. So what the sine function does, it basically gets a negative 1, 0, or 1 based on the value here. So if we're currently uh, over the degree of 1 to a particular side, and we're currently not st on, uh, in our steering state, we'll basically um, go back to our upright position. Yeah. Else, once we're in our upright position, we want to make sure that we stay there. And to do that, we set our angular velocity along our x and our z as zero. So if I run the script, I'll show you what it looks like right now. As you can see, our vehicle is here. We can move around as normal. We're locked in an upright position. And if we go fast enough, our vehicle should enter the stay lean state. So that way we're able to uh, lean in the direction that we're steering if we're going at a certain speed. And if we reduce our speed, we should go back into an upright position. The only thing is we're not currently animated, so it looks a bit weird. So let's fix that right now. And to do this is fairly simple. So basically, let's just remove this for the time being. And let's go to our animation. So hashtag animation. What we're going to do, we're going to get our handlebars, the rotation degrees dot y, which is going to equal to radians to degrees of our current steering basically saying that uh, based on the value of our front wheels um, steering rotation, we're going to rotate the handlebars at that same uh, rotation degrees. Second thing we're going to do, let's get our front wheel, handlebars dot front mesh dot rotation is equal to front dot rotation. So what this means is, um, because our front wheel is going to be spinning, as this is spinning, we want our mesh to spin at the same speed as the front wheel. And we want the same thing for the back wheel as well. So before my laptop dies, let's go to back mesh dot rotation is equal to back dot rotation. So if everything is correct, if I run the script right now, everything should work. So here we have our vehicle. If I move the handlebars, the wheel moves with it. If I move, the wheels rotate. And if I move fast enough, I should enter the sterling state and be able to move along with it. And then if I reduce my speed, I should re-enter the normal steering state. My vehicle becomes upright. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something new, uh, feel free to comment, you know, give me some suggestions. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day.